Thank you, Charlene. And we're all in the mood for worship now, as we've been prepared with a little bit of music to help set us on the right pace here. Well, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our risen Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Welcome all. Welcome all. Whether you've been here regularly for a number of years, whether you're here for a first time this morning, welcome as we gather to hear the word of our Lord and the love we share together in him. It's the uh, second Sunday of Easter, and what that means is that uh, we are going to hear Jesus himself proclaim the words of peace as he shares them with his disciples in the upper room the very day of his resurrection. So that is something to look forward to and say, there's a connection. We've heard that before, and that is why we profess that as our desire, that we may all know the peace that is ours through Jesus. Well, today is also the first Sunday of the month, and we hadn't had a long history of a pattern in place as such. March, the first Sunday in March, we had our first fellowship time following worship. Today is the first month, or the first Sunday in April, the same taking place. We did a good job, I think, of identifying uh, this kind of ministry of connecting with one another a little bit on a period, you know, periodically on a regular basis. It was well received in March. What we didn't do such a good job on is how to pass it on from month to month so that others can be involved. And uh, Easter got in the way a little bit of having us tracking and thinking until all of a sudden it's, oh, this Sunday is supposed to be, and it will be. A couple of us are making sure that we have some refreshment and uh, things to enjoy together. But in the next couple of days, we hope to have a, a sign-up sheet for volunteers who would be willing to help host, sponsor our next one in May, and, and the subsequent Sundays that follow beyond that. It's not a huge ordeal, it's not a big job, but it's an important one, and uh, I would encourage you to read that over, and we will be providing some information as to what might be helpful to know. We can make it happen, I know we will. Lastly, I just wanted to lift up, in terms of prayer concerns, Debbie Carter's sister, Patty, who is presently hospitalized and being treated for some rather complicated medical concerns. So we include Patty in our prayers this morning to add to others that have been on the list ongoing. The prayers that we share are ours. Let's begin our worship as we rise together. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us together share our confession and forgiveness. Having been raised with Christ, let us seek things that are above, confessing our sins against God and each other. Almighty God, in raising Jesus from the tomb, you destroy the power of sin and death. Hear us as we confess our failure to live the good news of the resurrection. Grant us the radiant power of your grace. Forgive us, heal us, and renew us so that we may know the joy of life abundant given in Christ, Christ, the risen Lord. God has given you a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And in him, you are forgiven. Rejoice in this good news. Thank you. 
Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our risen Savior, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, 
Enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated as we continue with our readings. Our first reading today comes from the fourth book of Acts. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what they sold, they laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Be to God. We'll read responsibly Psalm 133. How good and how pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the dew of Hermon flowing down upon the hills of Zion, for there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Our second reading comes from the first book of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you may also have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. As our gospel acclamation, we will be singing the hymn, Be Not Afraid. It is one short verse. So I will play it through once, and then we'll sing it through twice.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, reading from the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the marks of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen <clears throat> and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our strength and you are our Redeemer. Amen. Now you may have or may not have noticed, but the second reading from 1 John included the word fellowship four different times. What does that mean? Exactly. That's when a question should be asked. When we are wondering, anytime we hear the same word or phrase being repeated in such a way that it sticks with us. Is there a particular point trying to be made? Is there a deeper meaning than what appears on the surface? Are we meant to pause for a moment to think it through just a little longer? I think so. I think something important is meant for our ears to hear and to pay attention. So where do we start? Well, generally, it's good to start where, right where we're at in the moment. So how do we understand the word fellowship? We talk about having fellowship with other people. Some churches, as we were discussing earlier today, um, having a multi-purpose area referred to as a fellowship hall we're being together as part of community includes the circumstances we suspect can be ours of just having some casual connection. A time for coffee and cookies, we could say. But at least having that is a starting point. 
And we're fairly confident that it isn't what the early Christians thought fellowship meant for them. It's more than sharing friendly relationships with like-minded people who have similar interests and feelings. The Greek word koinonia roughly translates as fellowship with an understanding of a unified body of people. As with Christians, holding Christ at the center to realize he is the common denominator that brings us together and unifies. Fellowship means more than just being pleasant to each other, although that's not a bad place to start. It means caring about what's going on in each other's lives, not out of nosiness, but out of genuine love and concern. I doubt we could give any better example of the full meaning of fellowship than what was represented in our reading from Acts, where everything was owned in common, held in common, where provisions were granted according to what was needed, and every need was met. Now, I'm not sure how that works out in our world today, but it worked for them for sure. Personally, I believe this world would be far better off if we did find at least some common ground, somewhere in the middle perhaps, to be able to share an understanding of fellowship that goes beyond coffee and cookies, that doesn't require to hold all things in common, but does reveal Christ's love, being at the center, interacting and helping and caring for others in real and significant ways. As Christians engage with each other, we understand we're doing more than providing social services. We share new life, found with hope that is centered in Jesus, our risen Lord. He is the one who stands at the center of our gospel. It is Jesus, our crucified and risen Lord, who places himself right in the middle of the community he created. Just a few days earlier, also in the setting of the upper room, Jesus shared fellowship with his disciples, making them one with him. He knelt to serve them as he washed their feet. He celebrated the Passover meal as he broke bread with them. And again, shared a unifying moment. And later that evening, he invited the disciples to join him in the Garden of Gethsemane as he prayed a prayer that included a tone of lament for what was coming, what he knew was eminent in the moment. Now, back in the current moment for them. Such things as that were recent history, but there was still work yet to be done. Grief intermingled with fear. Their ranks had been reduced by one. They must have grieved Judas Iscariot, who had been their friend, yet who had fallen out of fellowship with them. They felt betrayed, much as Jesus did. Yet Thomas was also missing in the moment. When Jesus met the other disciples right there where they were in the upper room, Jesus brought them peace in their time of turmoil. He strengthened them with the gift of his Holy Spirit. He prepared to send them out for the work they were instructed to do. And then instantly, his presence vanished. A week later, with Thomas having returned, the excitement of the other ten must have rivaled Mary Magdalene's, who had previously exclaimed, I have seen the Lord. Now it was their time to say, we have seen the Lord. They had seen his hands inside. They had felt his touch. We trust that Jesus knew Thomas shared the very same need. So within the fellowship he shared with them all, Jesus provided the same gifts of peace, visual evidence, and gentle touch. 
another translation than the NRSV that we heard today. Had Jesus saying to Thomas, do not be unbelieving, but believing. I hear such words as encouragement leading to reconciliation as Jesus brought Thomas back into the fold, back into the fellowship they shared together once again. Oh, don't we wish there was a special means by which this story in Scripture could fast forward to clearly identify where we fit into the picture. Well, actually, we have been included. Do we not hear it in the final verse of today's Gospel reading? We heard, These things are written so that you, and that means us, so that we may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, that through believing you, that means us, so that we may find life in his name. Trusting the actual witness who saw and touched and told, so we may not be unbelieving, but believing. And it all starts with being in fellowship together in Christ Jesus. The ones who had witnessed the resurrection, <clears throat> namely the disciples who were present at the time, shifted from being witnesses of the resurrection to becoming witnesses to the resurrection. They came out from behind closed locked doors to tell and retell the resurrection story that pointed to Jesus and who he was and how he had been treated and that he died but then was raised to new and eternal life by the power of his heavenly Father. This is God's love story meant for the whole world to hear because as our heavenly Father, God shows this same love for us promising eternal life will be ours as well. So now it's our turn. Throughout the centuries that have passed since Jesus' resurrection and ascension, there have been those witnessing to the resurrection. Not firsthand, but present witnesses nonetheless. It started in the fellowship they shared together, it continued in their communities of faith as it grew. It's now up to us to share the word of resurrection hope that reveals Christ's light still shines into our darkness. And Jesus' love still holds us together in him. It begins as invitation, one that says, come, join us. It may continue with a few cookies and coffee, but we're not meant to get stuck there, as if that's enough. There is so much hope-filled joy that awaits us and those who still need to hear the story that is ours to tell, that is theirs to know, and that is all of ours to experience as a fellowship of faith, faith in the crucified and risen Lord, to be united in Christ's love, the one true love and the one true life that never ends. Thanks be to God for this immeasurable gift of love. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
make public profession of our faith, sharing the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Your church cries out, O God, and you listen. As you drew near to the disciples, draw near to us this day. Breathe on us, your Holy Spirit, that our faith is renewed and we witness to your love. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your creation cries out, O God, and you listen. Nurture trees, crops, wildflowers, and all growing things. Guide farmers, gardeners, arborists, and others who tend to soil and nurture plants into life. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your world cries out, O oh God, and you listen. Guide police, firefighters, paramedics, and other first responders to work for the well-being of communities, public safety, and the dignity of every person, that no one may need to live in fear. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your children cry out, O oh God, and you listen. Hear your people crying out for justice and for a world where all are fed and safe. We pray for all who cry out in suffering or pain, especially those who grieve and those experiencing new or ongoing challenges in terms of health. We lift up especially this day Debbie Carter's sister, Patty, as she's currently hospitalized and being treated. We lift up Russell and Jim Barbara, Rowena, Terry, and others we name before you, bring to them, each of them and others unknown to us yet known to you, your healing power, renewed strength, comfort, and peace. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your congregations cry out, O oh God, and you listen. 
renew pastors, deacons, musicians, and other staff, administrators, and volunteers who facilitated Holy Week and Easter worship and continue their presence among us yet. Open our hearts to discern where God calls each of us to serve and equip us to do so. God of grace, hear our prayers. Accept our gratitude, O God, for the lives of those who now rest in you, including Lutheran theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer and all whose lives have been given for the sake of the gospel. Grant us your peace amid our fears. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of our risen Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. We rise together as we continue with the offering prayer. Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. <clears throat> The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Peace. 
It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. Broke and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast, grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit, with your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars. We praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table of grace. Taste and see that the Lord is good. All things are now ready. The congregation may be seated.
Please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Savior and friend. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope, bless you now and always. Amen. So what's next on the agenda? A little time for fellowship, we trust. If you're able to, please join us over in the hall and uh, share the time that we can together. Renewing, deepening our various relationships. Now, alleluia. Go in peace. Rejoice and be glad. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.